Today, we'll be talking about two of Ferelden's most powerful families, the rise of one and the fall of another. The Howes are one of the most ancient noble families in Ferelden, long predating the founding of the kingdom itself. From the fortress of Vigil's Keep, the Howes ruled the Arling of Amaranthine, which once extended as far west as High Ever. High Ever was an outpost of the Arling ruled by the Elstans, a secondary branch of the Howe family, until Ban Conabar Elstan was murdered by his wife, Flemeth, in the Tower's Age, thus ending the bloodline. The captain of Conabar's guard, Sarim Kuzlin, took the Ban's lands and titles. The Kuzlins declared their independence from the Howes in a war raged between the two families for thirty years. When the dust settled, the Kuzlins had wrested control of half of Amaranthine's lands. The Kuzlins would rise to prominence in the next century during the Black Age, when a scourge of werewolves threatened Ferelden. Ban Kuzlind united many lords behind them to drive the werewolves from their land, and for their deeds they were acclaimed with the title of Tern, a title for those of great influence in Ferelden, and at the time the highest title one could achieve among the Alamari of the Valley. The Kuzlins actually opposed Kalanhad Theron's attempt to unite Ferelden under his rule in the Exalted Age. Terna Elethea Kuzlind led the local bands against Kalanhad forces in a bid to maintain High Ever's independence, and was soundly defeated. Despite having the Kuzlin Terna at his mercy, Kalanhad allowed them to keep their lands and titles as long as they swore their fealty to him. This would not be the last time the Kuzlins found themselves opposing the crown, however. During the start of the Storm Age, the Kuzlin supported Sophia Dryden, commander of the Grey Wardens of Ferelden, who led a rebellion against her cousin, King Arland Theron, a cruel tyrant. The rebellion was betrayed and crushed before it could truly get off the ground. Sophia and her wardens were trapped in their mountain fortress, and many of her supporters were executed, including the Kuzlin Tarn. The Howes and Kuzlins found themselves on opposite sides of the rebellion during the Orlesian occupation of Ferelden in more recent history. During the initial invasion, Tern Ardal Kuzlin died at the Battle of Lothering with King Vanadrin in 824 Blessed. Arl Tarleton Howe, who was a sharp and bitter near 90-year-old man by the time the rebel queen was mustering her forces, chose to side with the Orlesians while the Kuzlin family had been forced to abandon High Ever very early in the occupation, resulting in several bitter battles between the Kuzlins and the Howes in the late Blessed Age, culminating in the taking of the town of Harper's Ford, where Tarleton Howe was hanged. His much younger brother Byron succeeded him as Arl. Unlike his father, Tarleton's son Rendon Howe supported the rebellion and joined the Army of the North, where he would meet and befriend Bryce Kuzland, whose sickly father, Tern William, was hidden in Southreach, and the young heir to the Arling of Southreach, Leonis Bryland. The Army of the North was led by Ban Angus Eremen of the Waking Sea. In 896 Blessed, the rebel queen was assassinated and her son Prince Marek went missing. The Army of the South, led by Arl Rendon Guerin, set up camp along the Kokari Wild, searching for the prince. Meanwhile, Ban Ehriman moved to block the narrow valley of White River to prevent two legions of Orlesian Chevalier from crossing the border and storming the hinterlands. Unfortunately, they arrived with little time to prepare, and had not been able to properly fortify their position. Outnumbered two to one, the Ferelden's narrowly held back the Orlesians for two days before finally ordering a retreat. Ban Angus was killed by enemy arrows during the withdrawal, and the Army of the North was effectively broken, with only fifty of the initial near a thousand men escaping. Rendon Howe was gravely injured by a Chevalier's spear through the chest and had to be carried off the field by his friends. They took refuge in a freehold near Redcliffe for a month until Rendon had recuperated enough to travel. When the three rejoined the Army of the South, Prince Merrick personally awarded all three Medals of Valor. Bryce and Leonis joined the rebel army, but Rendon was too badly wounded, instead spending months in South Reach being tended by Elian Bryland, Leonis' sister. 
Meanwhile, Brendan's uncle, Arl Byron, had given Prince Merrick's army shelter in the woods near Amaranthine, and joined the rebellion with his soldiers. He fought with the rebels for two years until they decided to attack the port of Guarin. Arl Byron was tasked with distracting the Orlesians by raiding in the west. He was successful in this until he came up against a full legion of Chevalier, backed by mages. He was able to write a letter of warning to the prince, but was killed. When he received word of his uncle's death, Rendon decided to return to Amaranthine despite his injuries. Worrying that he might die along the way without help, Elian insisted on accompanying him. A year later, Rendon asked her to marry him, saying that they might as well marry if she wasn't going to leave. Leonis was disturbed by the abrasive change in behavior that had come over Rendon after the Battle of White River, and tried to dissuade them from marrying. Elian refused to hear him, and Rendon bluntly told his old friend he needed Elian for her dowry and political connections. Leonis cut ties with them both. As for Bryce Coosland, he acquitted himself well in the rebellion. By the time Prince Merrick reclaimed Denrim in 9-2 Dragon, he was a decorated and respected commander. After Denrim fell, the Ferelvans knew that the Orlesians may attempt to take the city back by sea, so Ban Fairchar Mac Anbrig called for volunteers to bolster his fleet. Ban Fairchar, or the Storm Giant as he was known, was one of several northern bands known for their piracy, especially against Orlay. Ban Fairchar was infamous, but his daughter, Eleanor Mac Anrag, the Sea Wolf, had outstripped him by war's end. Raised on the deck of a warship, Eleanor captured her first Orlesian warship at the age of fifteen. It was aboard her ship, the Mistral, that Bryce Coosland volunteered to lead a group of soldiers. Supposedly, their first meeting went so poorly it was immortalized in a sea shanty, the soldier and the sea wolf. Apparently, he mistook her for a servant, and she did not take it well. Despite their initial clash, the two worked well together and sunk a dozen Orlesian ships in the Battle of Denerim Harbor. Shortly after they returned to port, Bryce received word that his father, Taren William, had died. He left to take his father's body to High Ever, where the nobles were shocked to see the first Kuzlin to enter the castle in seventy years. It took four months for Bryce to claim his title as Taren, and he sent Eleanor letters daily. When they next met at King Merrick's formal coronation, Bryce attempted to propose to her by singing all ten verses of The Soldier and the Sea Wolf. She only let him get to three. Bryce brought his fiancée to witness his friend Rendon Howe's marriage to Elian Bryland. They were the only ones in attendance. Rendon had received an ambivalent reception in Amaranthine. To his bands, he was the nephew of a hero and the son of a traitor. To make matters more awkward, several of his bands had actually attempted to swear fealty to Bryce only months earlier when he reclaimed his title. His abrasive and unpleasant manner ever since the Battle of White River had failed to endear him to anyone. There were also whispers that questioned whether he should have succeeded his uncle, as Arl Byron's widow and children were still in the free marches where he had sent them for safety. Years of peace passed. By 930 Dragon, Rendon and Bryce both had grown children. From the south, they received word of a darkspawn horde growing in the Kakari wilds, and a summons from Merrick's son, King Kaelin, to gather their forces to combat a potential blight. All Rendon and Tern Bryce planned to march south together, but Rendon's forces were slow to arrive at High Ever, so Bryce sent his son Fergus south with the bulk of High Ever's forces. That's when Rendon sprung his trap. What causes a man to turn on his oldest, best, and only friend? Jealousy, spite, naked ambition? Whatever it was, Rendon Howe never showed a shred of regret for his actions. Howe forces stormed High Ever Castle in the dead of night. The small number of household guards remaining in the castle didn't stand a chance. Bryce Coosland's family was slaughtered, including Fergus's wife and young son. With the castle secure, Rendon Howe declared himself the new Tarn, and received legitimacy from his new ally, none other than Tarn Loghain Mactir, self-declared regent after King Caelan died at Ostagar. Not content with even this, 
Arl Howe seized the Arling of Denerim for himself as well. As civil war and the blight raged across Ferelden, Howe made his murderous cunning and brutality indispensable to Loghain. Howe ruled his new holdings with an iron fist, imprisoning and torturing any loose ends that could hurt his or Loghain's rule. He brutalized and sold the elves of Denerim's alienage into slavery. He hired assassins to hunt the last Grey Wardens at Vereldon. He was complicit in the poisoning of Arl Eamon Guerin of Redcliffe, Loghain's greatest potential rival in Ferelden. He may have been embezzling funds from the treasury. He even tried to convince the regent to murder his own daughter, Queen Anora, and pinned it on his political enemies to discredit them. This last one would be his undoing. He kidnapped Queen Anora and imprisoned her in the Arl of Denerim's estate when she came looking to question him. Her maid managed to alert Arl Eamon and the Grey Wardens. They encountered Howe as he surveyed the dungeons, and he attacked, hoping to solve his problems then and there. Instead, Rendon Howe fell, spiteful to the last. Make a spit on you. I deserved more. As luck would have it, Fergus Kuzlin avoided the battle at Ostkar entirely. His unit had been ambushed while scouting the Kakari Wilds. Most of his men were killed, but Fergus was taken in by some chastened. The Wilders nursed him back to health, but his road to recovery was long. It wasn't until after Rendon Howe's death and the Civil War was ended that he managed to return to civilization. With Loghain defeated, Howe's crimes laid bare and a new monarch on the throne. The Howe family was stripped of all its lands and titles. Two of Rendon Howe's children survived the blight, but they were either unwilling or unable to reclaim their birthright after all their father had done. The Arling of Amaranthing was given to the Grey Wardens. The Terner of High Ever was returned to its rightful heir, Fergus Kuzland. Well, that sort of felt like it turned into a Rendon Howe video halfway through. Anyway, I have a few things to talk about because there are more than the usual inconsistencies in this. I tried to breeze past them in the video, but here we go. Okay, there's the oddity introduced in the World of Thetis Volume 2 that says Bryce was the first Kuzlin to enter High Ever in 70 years due to the Orlesian occupation. This can fit with earlier information if you just assume the Kuzlins were Terrans in exile for all that time. It's still weird it was never mentioned, and the older Codex entries read like the Kuzlins were based in High Ever at the time. There's also an old unresolved issue where the Kuzlin Codex entry from the Human Noble Origin says Helia Kuzlin was the one to gather the bands to fight the werewolves, but the old Tudor also in the Origin says it was Mather Kuzlin. I don't think that was ever resolved. Also, I mentioned in my Flemeth video that there was supposedly no evidence of a banned Conobar Elstan. That's information from the world of Thetis, which doesn't jive at all with the sources saying that the Elstans were a branch family of the Howes, and that Serum Kuzlin was Conobar's guard captain. The idea that the story might be about Terran Talamal makes even less sense then, but that was only supposed to be a scholar's theory anyway. Then there's the issue of Tarleton Howe. Dragon Age Origins Awakening players may remember that one of the gifts you can gift Nathaniel Howe is a bow he claims belonged to his grandfather, who joined the Grey Wardens. But according to Codex entries in Origins and the World of Thetis, Tarleton was his Howe grandfather, and he was killed by the Kuzlins while fighting for the Orlesians. There's also a bit of an issue with Rendon Howe's recovery and his uncle's death. The World of Thetis Volume 2 says that the Battle of White River happened in 896, blessed, just after Queen Moira's death. Then it says Howe spent months in recovery before he heard news of his uncle Byron's death. Thing is, Arl Byron died at least two years after Moira died in the Stolen Throne, so I'm not sure what that's about. Either Rendon spent two years instead of a few months recuperating in South Reach, or the Battle of White River occurred much later. That's it. I'm hoping to get on a more regular schedule with these. See you next time.